Broadcasting live from the Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. It's Not Conscious with Mark Poles and Chris Woodsy Peralta from the home offices in Gilbert, Arizona. Chilo. Como esta? Muy bien. ¿Y tú? Yes, you were really cranked like, up, sir. Why am I so loud? Even You're in my really ears, loud. I was loud. I was like, I went to turn down the this volume, and you turned down that volume. Yes, good job. I was wondering what I was like. Uh, whoa! Broadcasting live. That, that really peaked. <laughs> my interest. Yes, my interest. I'm good afternoon. Interested. Good evening. How are you, sir? How are you, sir? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. Welcome to Not Conscious, everybody. Yes. Welcome, Not Conscious, everybody. Oh, who's waving? I forget who's on who. Today we're doing what? The Drake Equation, my Drake dude. Drake Equation. Before we begin, yes, I have a special presentation. A special presentation. Are you ready? I am ready for this, sir. Can I get a... He's shuffling, ladies and gentlemen. He's shuffling. A box of shit? <laughs> It's not a box of shit. Oh. It's a box of awesome. I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> what? What is this? I don't know. What is this? Oh, the Gaffa Cigars. Gaffa! Individually numbered and really oddly opened. Do you mind checking that? I may have broken it already. You just, nice. You... I, don't, I didn't do anything, sir. How's it looking? Oh. They looking okay? Sexy as hell, bro. Bro, they look is good? Is there anything else in there? Uh, I don't know. You sure? Check it out, bro. Is there something? There should be. You got to autograph something or other. Uh, didn't he autograph the box? I thought I he autographed know. the box. But I guess he didn't. I thought he did. Thought it's they're... all good. I don't care. This is awesome. Well, we just had that episode. Mm. Is that how close? There it goes. Now it's close. Yeah, because okay. it was popped up in okay. the middle. Oh, it was popped on purpose? No, because oh. of the inside cedar. Oh, okay. Got it. Nice, man. Beautiful. And here you go. This is... Where's your... Ball, where's Ooh, your... Uh... Right. Oh, that's yours. Yeah, that's yeah, your yeah. ball mark. I just wanted nice. to show it to you. Look at oh, this. Look what he's doing. It. Is he doing the guffaw? Yeah. Nice. Show it. Show the show, audience. Show the peoples. The peoples. Who? I think... Yeah, you're on me for some reason. No, you're on me for some reason. Oh, you're on you now. There you are. Guffaw! That is a beautiful oh, thing, man. It's a big poker chip. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Well, we got to throw these in your humidor and, and yeah. smoke them also. Tandy. Yes. Well, thank you. Thanks, thank uh, you. Proper. We uh, did some good for Barrow Neurological. Bar Barrow Neurological? Uh, not Barrow. Not it's Barrow. Bancroft. Bancroft. Yeah. Um, I know he sent some proceeds to that. Some to them. proceeds. So uh, for all oh, the people not crazy. on video, we got a nice box of guffaw cigars from uh, cigars brian prop we bought them yeah we bought them of course but Ooh, they're crunchy we bro. don't want to open oh they're crunchy oh yeah they're hard uh -oh. as rock. we're gonna have to humidor them sir okay yeah okay that's, oh, not good. that's probably not good we're gonna have to Ooh, though, they, they smell, smell great, good dude. they do smell good i did smell them already, okay but <clears throat> yummy Are your dog senses tingling? Oh, it, it smells really good. I'm See? actually really excited. Maybe I'll, maybe tonight. Maybe I just have to have one tonight. So, um, that was a really long intro, but well hey, worth it. Hey, dude, on video, I, well, it was. It's been. I've had this on, on my video. counter for three days. It's beautiful. So I've been uh, waiting to give these to you, sir. Gaffa Cigars. Once again, the affiliate link is in uh, our show notes. GaffaCigars.com. Yes, but it's also in our show notes. We've got an affiliate in so the you show click notes. Click on a link, so the the proper people get the proper credit. You know what I'm saying? No, no pun intended with the proper comment. Proper, right? Yes. Do, 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 so lovely. Thank you, sir. That is beautiful. I am excited. Are you gonna Hannibal? Are you gonna Hannibal from A Smith? Are you gonna Hannibal Smith at the rest of the podcast? Uh, no, because I'm gonna. If I do that, did, I'm gonna want to light it. I know. Did and you I'll put, be like, did you take it off the wrapper and throw away the wrapper? Yeah. You did that. You can't. It doesn't matter. Either oh. way, it's fine. Yeah, if I they're pre crunchy, this if they're this. Crunchy. Well, either way, you could put them in the humidor with the wrapper or not. It's they so, smell so, amazing. They do. I'm I very would excited. concur, sir. You should totally Hannibal Smith it. Uh, that's not no negative. So Drake equation. Frank Drake. No, is it Frank? I, 
It's it is. not Sir Francis. I was like, yeah, I always thought Isn't it was. Isn't it so funny? Who's there's Sir a, Francis Drake? There is a Sir Francis Drake. I didn't want to go in that tangent, but okay. I almost I almost beer Googled him. Okay, Sir we Francis won't. Drake. But it's Frank Drake. Well, first of all, before we talk, yes. why did you want to talk about, why was this on the list? Yeah, so this, we are, the thing about you and I, we're just curious people. And you and I talk about aliens and intelligent life and otherworldly extraterrestrial stuff a lot. Because we're curious if, in fact, that is the case. Um, and we also try to combat it. It's just a good thought experiment. Like, you and I trigger our synapses by going, hey, what, do you think there's enough intelligent life out there to have craft to get here? And yes. say hi to us, for example. So the interesting thing about Drake is this is where it all started. This gentleman, Frank Drake, um, I think he... At the first SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, you know SETI, the uh, organization? I do. They have, like, satellites all over. They rent time, and they, they look for all that stuff, radio signals and all this stuff, right? Um, at the first one, he produced this equation. Now, the equation isn't really an equation. It's, it doesn't come up to an exact number, but it's a really interesting thought experiment about the possibility or how likelihood or the likelihood of intelligent life yes <laughs> so so when i share this with you what did you yes. what did you think when you read up a little bit about it uh i thought it confirms my previous thoughts that we're not alone in the universe there's obviously there's obvious and i told tyson this at the bottom of the grand canyon <laughs> 10 years ago, mathematically speaking alone, we're not alone. Just a sheer number. Human beings are not the only intelligent being in the universe. Intelligent? Because okay. of numbers. And that this, and I'm not a doctor of any kind, unless you count witch doctor. And this dude just confirmed my thought that I had at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, and I wasn't drunk or high. So, or both. Or both. Both of them. <laughs> uh, very excellent points. Um, then, and, and if you did put numbers on everything, we'll break down each of the pieces of the equation, right? Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Because there's a couple that are very con concerning for me for the intelligent life part. Is there life other elsewhere? I don't think that we can, I don't think that's really arguable. Like, I think life exists somewhere else. Some kind of life. Of even if it's, yeah. Even just single cell organism. Something cell. lives somewhere else. That's my opinion. It's pretty strong. I can't imagine it being refuted that strongly. Um, as for intelligent life, though, that's where it gets tricky, right? So let's go down this equation. Do we want to talk about the dude first of all? Yeah, tell us. Tell us about uh, Frank. Doctor Frank Drake. He's ninety years old, born in nineteen thirty. Uh, American astronomer and astrophysicist. As a smart dude, um, he went to Cornell University. And in 1960, he began the observational attempts at detecting extraterrestrial communications. And that's where he developed the Drake equation. Right. And that's what we're talking about. Um, part of this, why this whole thing came to be, was how, if there was a civilization outside of Earth's, right? Outside of humans, how would we know? And the, it always came back to, well, we'd have to pick up some kind of signal that's not natural right and that would be like a radio signal or some kind of program or something yes or is it <laughs> you said a radio signal but that's not necessarily it could be any kind of signal it yeah. doesn't have to be a radio signal. when i say radio it could be any frequency okay yes yeah okay. now can, I, now i am okay I, I just use radio only because that's our lay term right it doesn't have to be like broadcasting live look at the games <laughs> Look at the games on that Syrian. <laughs> oh, that Palabian really, uh, really got some nice hooters. Oh, hey now. Yeah, we went from games to hooters. So, um, yeah, wow. anything else about Frank? He supervised the creation of the Voyager Golden Record. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. And that's Are you familiar Vija with that? Vija. From Stupid Star Trek. Vija. Number one. I'm a blind, Which, I'm a, I'm a bald, bald model, Vija. It's Sinead O'Connor, Vija. Did, did, so did Vija stupid. rip up a picture of the Pope? Probably. So, okay, so back on you. Back on me. And back, and, and, and back on you. And back to you. 
so that's all I have on Dr. Frank Drake. So do you, what is the golden record? Tell us about the golden record, because I know you, I'm sure you and I both if know. I've got a golden ticket. So V'ger, now Voyager, and it's Voyager 1, right? Uh, Correct. Voyager golden record. Didn't they put that? The Voyager golden record are two phonograph records that were included aboard the Voyager spacecraft launched in 1977. The records contain sounds and images selected to portray the diversity of life and culture on Earth and are intended for any intelligent extraterrestrial life form who may find them. All right. That is Beautiful. all. So it's got like like greetings from Earth and sounds and shit. Greetings from Earth. Right. Sounds and shit. It's got some disco. Are you familiar with the... 11 pulsars like the map that the plaque that's on the voyager i'm not sure it's on voyager or voyager 2 uh i i'm not familiar with that so now. basically what uh, carl sagan they used uh pulsars 11 i think 11 pulsars to show where we're located oh in the, okay in the universe or whatever it's kind of interesting just because they're clocks of the universe so frank drake yes seti we're going to listen for all these cool frequencies so they point the radio, the satellite dishes, the radio telescopes up to the sky, and they listen, right? Basically, all night. All night long. All night. Yes. And then, that, and then Charlie Sheen gets contact, <laughs> and then gets chased by Ron uh, Silver, who's also the bad guy man, in Time Cop. Remember that one? The Arrival. Oh, that's a great one. But there's the other Arrival. There's Arrival too. There's Arrival and the, Arrival too. Well, Arrival, Arrival, because Arrival. Oh yes, there's also Arrival. There's the. Correct. It's the redheaded chick and they do the weird yeah. language is the communication yeah. of the blah 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 and they got yeah. the big spongy fingers on the glass with born with born 2.0 with hawkeye. born supremacy point right? seven correct is it, is it a hawkeye, hawkeye guy? Jeremy, supremacy jeremy rim jobber <laughs> what renner whoa oh renner. i didn't i jeremy forgot his last name's <laughs> it sounded close so it was kind of close so drake is a thought experiment isn't it basically like more than more than is anything else I, I would agree that that is correct. Yes, sir. Woo. And hitting that last switch to the right there, on the right. Don't tell me what to do. Oh, I was just asking if you minded. You could say, yeah, I mind. I mind, bitch. So this is where... Oh! Pipe it down. So this is where we go with Drake. We are trying to figure out the number of technologically advanced civilizations. Now, initially, it was just the Milky Way galaxy, because they figured travel would be challenging between galaxies yeah because how far andromeda for example is our closest one and they're really far away but even within milky way galaxy it's a lot but you can use this number for the universe too you just have to extrapolate that out correct exactly you just extrapolate it out right because there are billions of galaxies inside the universe that's correct so here's an interesting one where they talk about the first part of it Right, it's a whole string, and we'll put the equation up on the on the show notes. Okay, so let's back up a second. Okay, here. Frank Drake came up with an equation that allows us to make an estimate by multiplying seven quantities related to the pre prevalence of life. That's the gist of the equation. That's correct. So somebody's like, "Hey, if you were to try to use how how would you determine?" The, the possibility of life on an on somewhere else intelligent life elsewhere which just a would you say it's a guesstimate absolutely yes okay. because it's it's really more of a th it's more of a thought of how this these are the steps you have to go through to figure out how many there are right <laughs> bless you thank you zoom uh, tight i was holding that one for a while <laughs> um, why, don't okay so do you have a follow-up question to that? I so? do not. I just wanted okay. to, to state the purpose of the, I mean, the, the, the summarization of the, of the equation. Right. So the equation is to determine the number of technologically advanced civilizations at a, in, well, here's the Milky Way, but you can extrapolate to your point out to the universe, right? We'll do it for the Milky Way because that's what it initially was intended for. Yeah, I, I agree. We should just, okay. yeah, let's stick with that. So I got you. the first part of the equation. Yes. Do you see that? Would you I, like to I share do. the first part? We the can first talk about part. It? Is R. And what is that? R for Roberto. Uh, R equals the number of suitable stars that form our galaxy per year. That's, yeah. I don't understand the per year part. Well, the R is the rate of formation. So basically, oh, according to that, formation. 
uh, in some of the experiment or some of the equations I saw, that's generally like one in the Milky Way galaxy per year. A one new star, new star is generated. Okay. Okay. However, once again, how many millions have we found, or t- tens of thousands of universes have we found? So think universes about universes or galaxies. Per galaxies. Think about one per galaxy, right? Oh yeah. So and there's billions of. Right. There's, let's just say there's a billion galaxies, but we're not gonna. That's maybe. I'm just saying that's a secondary. It's point. a second, right? It's a secondary point. So if it's one here, it's one times the number of galaxies, right? So Every are time. we going to put one in that field? Yeah, that's where we saw one. I think is what uh, I saw some of these numbers Check. today. I hope Mark. Check Mark. He's like I. I tried to figure out these numbers. Are you like a I, doctor I of find, astrophysicism? Yeah, yes, I cannot doctor find Check Mark the number. Do you have Do you have equation with fill in? Yeah. Okay, you have it filled in somewhere? Yeah. Okay, cool. On, my, on the trusty iPad. Okay, so after the rate, yeah. what's the next piece? So what are your th- what's your thought about that? Like, that makes total sense, right? Well, I'd never... Sure, but I didn't know... I thought it was just the number of suitable stars, not the number of suitable stars that form in our galaxy per year. I didn't, get, I didn't read that second part thoroughly enough. So I'm like, I don't understand why he would do that. But like you said, it's the rate of growth. Right. So, okay. I, I didn't know that. I didn't never really thought about the fact that there's m- more stars being born, but there's also stars dying. There are stars dying. Yes. So I didn't ever thought about that, but I'm like, okay, I get you. Yeah, it's it is seem it does seem weird because it's a rate of formation. It's not just number of. Well, that just which also tells me that the the number of stars in the galaxy is growing. Yes. So they're being born faster than they're dying is what that tells me. That, and it, I never thought well, about it that could either. Be. It could be. Well, I mean, there could be a point where there is a shrink, right? Where the, well, yeah. Where we don't know, right? He's just saying whatever that rate number is. It oh, can it could be, be minus one. Right. It could be technically, oh. it could technically be a negative number. Or, or a, a zero. Number, right. Or nothing, right? So oh. it could be that. But the assumptions are that about one star per, Net one yeah, star. per galaxy is formed. So, which is interesting. So the second portion of that. What of what part? What's the second part of that? That or what's the next part of that equation? The next part is FP, as in Francis Papa. The fraction of these stars that have planets. All right. So, so a lot of stars don't have planets. A number of them don't. However, there. I think I saw. Did you see an equation that was written out completely? You said I saw one that was like this one two to five. Yes. What's what are didn't they give you guidelines of numbers though? Oh, you mean they, underneath FP? Should I click on the more button? Yeah, sure. Why not? I'm clicking Let's on give the it more. a try. More. <laughs> FP, the fraction of these stars that have planets. Note probability at least half of all sun like stars have planets. Most stars are too small to to gravitationally support a planetary system, while some stars have too short of a lifespan. Probably at least half of all sun-like stars. So do you just want to say I saw it was 0.49? I saw between 0.2 and 0.5. Okay. So let's split the difference, go 35? 0.35. Roger that. Bro, that's exactly what I was thinking, my friend. Point. Three, five. Right, and and for for the first one, was it was it one? I don't know. I didn't click more. on more, bro. Well, maybe you should click more on that one There's as well. There's so many more buttons, dude. Uh, I can't help it, man. That's what happens when you beer Google. Oh my god, what's wrong with this button? You're not working. Oh no. <laughs> well, after that, so we have the rate, the average rate of star formation oh, per sorry. year. It, it did work. I'm dumb. I apologize. R the moops. The I got the moopies. The, uh, the are the number of suitable Seinfeld, stars the moops. The, that form in our galaxy per year. Note, <laughs> astronomers estimate that number is about one. Okay. So, smart guy, check mark. Way to go. Yes, I heard this was number ones. <laughs> I like it. So, uh, numero trace, I believe, is the, Three, the third four, portion five, six, of this. Seven. So, to summarize, oh, there's seven fields that are multiplied together to get the answer. Yes. So we're going through each field. The first is the number of stars. The sec that the grows per, the rate per year. Right, the, rate per year. the second is FP, which is the fraction of the star of those stars that have planets. Correct. So they guess between one fifth and one half. So we're going to split that difference, and we're going to go thirty-five percent. 
Yep, thirty five percent. We of is a good number to say. Thirty five percent of stars that are formed have a planet. Yes, like revolving ours. Revolving around them. Like well, our not like, We're not there yet. Not like ours yet, but just like a planet. Well, yeah, the, fra- yeah, the stars that have planets. Right. Like our solar system has Correct. planets. Exactly. That's my point. Got it. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. M- Moving forward. To- Moving along yes. to the third bullet of the equation is NE. The number of Earth-like planets, aka planets that have liquid water within each planetary system. So that would be the Goldilocks zone, right? The For the end. solar system, this number is at least one. The Earth, and perhaps more, if Europa or other moons turn out to have oceans. So it's at least one. Is so what it's at saying. least one. And I think one's a good Do you want to stay number. with one, yeah. sir? Because I, it would be my opinion that there did appear to have be something on Mars, and it looks like Mars would have been in the Goldilocks zone had, had it had an atmosphere, correct? Yes, but they're they're saying that Mars might have traces of water, correct? Right. right. Which is so but yes, it's ice. I would agree with you. Yes. So traces of water would be could be just ice. Yes, any and water it has form. To be liquid water though. Well, if you can melt ice, right? I know, but if it's not in the Goldilocks zone, it'll never melt oh, it'll, to become okay, yeah. to make you, life. You have to go there and thaw it. Okay, now I understand. Right. So the Goldilocks zone is the distance from a star. Yes. That it would be, right? Now we're a white sun. And it's going to go supernova at some point and then become like a red dwarf. There are some red dwarves or some other stars that have, that the planets are much closer to. Yes. Because. It can support life. Because, because the, of the temperature of the star is a lot cooler. Which would, which would, that just means how old the star is, right? In general terms, yes. It would be the age of the star or how it was constructed or whatnot and things like that. Hydrogen, a lot of, bro. A lot of factors. Hydrogen, helium. All that shit. said definitely hydrogen. Yes. Sure. Okay, so the no, the average number of planets that can potentially support life. So Earth-like liquid water, right? Yes, liquid and water. They're saying about one per. Yes, sir, that's correct. So right now we've got one star average per year. Yes. 0.35 of them have a planet, a planet around them. And uh, one of, of, of those, or I'm sorry. Of those planets. Of those ones that have planets. One would be in the Goldilocks zone. Correct. Okay. Cool. Liquid water. Yes. Next. Okay. Number hey, f- oh my gosh, I nexted. Stop it. How dare I? Uh number four is FL. The fraction of Earth like planets where life develops. So it's obviously different than just the capability of having life. It actually has to happen. Correct. Okay. I'm curious what that number is. What is, what is what's that number in your little equation box? If you think all Earth-like planets produce life, your estimate would be one. If you think only one t- one in ten such planets produce life, your estimate would be point one. Would you like to be conservative and go one in a hundred, or is that too conservative? If you think all Earth-like planets produce life, your estimate would be one. Right. If you think... One in 10 would be 0. 0.1. Right, 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 right. And then one in 100 one would be, be 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.001. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think of yeah. your comment about being conservative. I'm trying to think what... If we're trying to get the most accurate number using this equation, what would be the best thing to put there? Yeah. So is being is going conservative the right... What if we did 5%, one in 20? That okay. seems, that uh, seems uh, fair. I agree. How about 0.05? that? 0.05? 0.05. How about that? I think that's fair. So we're we're going to just make the assumption that of, pl- of planets that have liquid water, 1 in 20 develop life of some sort. Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. I like it. And the reason it, it will matter that we extrapolate this out to the universe because that number becomes huge once we do that. It becomes what? Huge. Huge. <laughs> it's going to be the best Drake equation ever. Do you, is We've, is Jess on the board yet with the? Uh, I don't. It's think It's the most so. award winning podcast. No, ever. Best the voting ever. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. If, okay, never I mind. Know. I would draw the question. You really put me on the spot, man. I don't even like. We spots. we put each other on spots all the time. Yes. It's ridiculous. We need spot. Remember. <laughs> resolve, bro. Resolve. Hey, resolve. resolve and then we Could need more dogs. Us pres- resolve. Because I do spot. use you when the dog pees on the carpet. We make we make New Year's res- resolutions. 
Resol- yes, all the time, bro. All the time, man. All right. So <laughs> we've got uh, rate of stars, fraction of those with planets, average number of planets that have water on them, the fraction of those that can actually develop life. Yes. All right. So that's, what are we, four four deep? Four deep, sir. Four out of seven. Yes. All right. We are. We have now gone over the hump. That, yes. That last one was Wednesday. our hump was our hump equation. <laughs> the rate of humping. No, our, that's not it at all. Our hump formula. <laughs> the next, the, the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, fifth. fifth. The fifth item on the list is FI, the fraction of life sites where intelligent life develops. So this is where it gets interesting. Yeah. What could we possibly deem as intelligent life? We define, Mr. Drake, Dr. Drake, defines intelligence as having a symbolic language like mathematics, English, Japanese. Since English, so I'm sorry, since language is required for communication. If you think every planet with life produces intelligent beings sooner or later, your estimate would be one. If you think only 1%, your estimate would be 0.01. Okay. So the percent of planets that develop life. So it all it's all about the ability to communicate, though. Is that is that that's what they're saying? What they're saying. Okay. That's correct. It doesn't well, state in, in any way. Doesn't state writing or it speaking. It says ma- it's, it's communicating. Okay. So what's your definition? Of- language, right? So w- let's let's break that down because this is where it's, this is where it gets important. What is your definition of intelligent life? Well, that's not the that's not the point. The point is. The life has to communicate. Right. That's what the equation states. That's so my right. opinion about what's intelligent life doesn't matter. Then let's break it down to what is your opinion of the communication? Can it only be spoken? No, of course not. Why not? Because there's other forms of communication besides speaking. Right. But, like sign language. But I'm saying if it's spoken, does that is that a is that count as a communication? If it's only spoken, not written. See, because here's here's no. where the argument comes. Dolphins, in my opinion, are very intelligent. They do have a communication. They can't write anything. They don't have the implements yeah, of no, tools I, and they live in I, water. I, right? I agree, yeah. They also can't harness fire. Well, that's because they live in water. We had that conversation. Water, right, we've had this conversation. So to me, though, in my opinion, that's intel- I would consider them an intelligent life. Well, yeah, I agree because if, if the two dolphins, if one goes ee and the other one hears that and understands it, then that's communicate. That's intelligent communication, right? And it's not written. Correct. No, it has nothing to do with writing. Right. That's what I'm saying. So if it's just spoken, purely spoken communication, mm-hmm. that does that? Do you accept that as yes. as intelligent? Okay. Yes. That's what I was asked. I thought you said no. In the beginning. What about telepathy? That's communication. Yes. If it's real, then absolutely. Well, if two, I- if two beings from another planet, yes, if communicate. they communicate through their Thoughts. brain waves. Mm-hmm. That's, I just use right. the word communicate. Can you read the part, the more no, part again about the communication? I cannot. That way, just to clarify, because it we is We really define important. intelligence as having a symbolic language like math or English, since language is required for a communication. See, symbolic is where I start thinking it's written somehow. Well, I... Because, like, dolphins don't know what, don't know what ee or aa looks like. Well, no shit, but... It's they're talking about intelligent symbolic language, right? So I wonder that symbolic. can be written. Right. It can be written, can be verbal, it can be okay, sign so language. Symbolic can, can be audio, aud- just not doesn't yeah. have to be visual. Because when I hear symbolic, I assume visual. Because I'm use because I put the word symbol in it. That's it says all I'm symbolic language like math or English. Right. Those are letter those t- have letters and, and yes. characters. So that would be written. Do you see? Do you see where I, I'm, yeah. I know I'm being like prickly about it? But well, I was stop it. Well, I'm, I'm trying to soften my edges, bro. <laughs> um, no, I was just curious. So I think that speaking alone is adequate for for intelligent communication, because in my opinion, dolphins in, are intelligent and they communicate. I agree. And they don't. They can't write. So what about like a cave person? You know, a million years ago on Earth, just th- that just had guttural sounds. Do you consider that communication? I mean, if, if if a cave person made a sound, does that mean that that's communication? Because somebody else 
another humanoid on earth wouldn't necessarily understand that just that's verbal. And I don't even know if I'm making sense. You're making a lot of sense. Stop it. Um, if no one else understands it, then it's just grunting and whatever. Like you can beat your chest and know that you're angry by going <laughs> like, you can, well, is that symbolic communication then? It's not, it's more just aggression. It's more just aggressive tendencies. I don't think it's communicating a thought. Because you don't know what the actual thought of that of the person is when they're doing that, right? You don't know if it's protection for food or for you know the reasoning, for example, for the outlash, right? Yes. So I would say that at that point, that was not intelligent yet. But if there's there's a social hierarchy and things like that, and they're generally at that point, I I think I mean, do you think apes can communicate? That's what I was just going to say, man. Is that there's social hierarchy with apes, right? Whether it's chimpanzees or those the big silverback gorillas, right? So do and there's you, understanding they, between them. They they're intelligent, yeah. And I mean, for Christ's sake, they can do sign language, and they can. I've seen I've seen you know, a, a primate use a a spear and fish, right? No joke, like yeah. It's, pretty, it's one of the coolest pictures I've ever seen. It's literally a primate hanging out of a tree and like spearing like uh the water to get a fish crazy did they catch the fish i don't i didn't see a fish oh, on the man. end I saw him everybody trying, wants man. to know we do want to know <laughs> the whole world wants to know um yeah so they communicate or is it an understanding like i don't know what level because bees technically communicate but it's not a symbolic language right they go they spin in a certain direction they leave pheromones they do this they do that technically that's communicating well, that's also, well, it's but just, it's not symbolic. It's purely instinct too, right? But that's we don't, just, right? But we, we don't. It's still communication, right? So it's just one of those weird gray areas. What would you put your number? What would you put the, as a number between one percent and a hundred percent? I I'd say point five. Yeah, again, that's exactly where I. I'm sorry, point zero five. At five percent. Five percent. Oh, okay. I was going to go fifty percent. Okay. On that. Only because. If life, well, we're not at the next one yet. Well, think about, okay, hang on. So we're talking about, we did 5% of Earth-like planets' life develops. So what percent of those life forms become intelligent? Right. So you could have amoebas and you could have microbes and- yeah, dinosaurs. I mean, before the, before the uh, asteroid yeah, but, hit- dinosaurs Correct. were the Earth. top right and we were like little moles right so technically we weren't we didn't dominate until the dinosaurs were gone right but th that means there was life so that means that earth would not have been considered on that list yet right they wouldn't have been intel i don't think that you would consider right intelligent but life. so if you let's say you have 100 planets how many of those planets are just going to have single celled organisms and you know non intelligent life? I like I like the five percent of five percent. Let's do it. Let's do five percent. I'm I'm with you. You sold me. One out of you 20. just drop forty five percent. Yeah, because I love I you, was man. ready to go halfway, bro. You want to nah. go thirty three? No, nah, I'm good. Thirty one point six. I I I feel like I want to be conservative with the number. First, then why of were all. you at fifty? Because I felt like that was rational, but now you make a lot of sense. Like one in twenty have life. One in twenty of those get intelligent life. That make that sounds good. Sounds He's, good to me. Because I just imagine there's a hundred planets, and they all have liquid water. Mm -hmm. Then there has to be life. Then there has to be intelligent life. And I can imagine a hundred planets with you know algae and spores and fucking fungus and shit, right? Yeah. But though that's I can imagine ninety nine planets like that. But one is the one that has intelligent life. Right. So do you think so, it's just 1%? No, we'll just go with five. Okay. I like 5%. See, look at that. We're already, we're already agreeing on stuff. Well, I didn't think we wouldn't be, but. Oh, well, I thought you hate me or something. You don't even like me. Next. I don't even want to be here. That, that as well. Now. Is this uh what are we on? Six? We're on one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Number six. Now we're on six. Go ahead, sir. F C. The fraction of intelligent life sites. Do we already do that one? Nope. Where communication develops. Did I click on the wrong one? I think so. Son of a poop. No, it is F of C though. I've got the fraction of civilization to develop a technology that releases detectable signs of existence into space. 
Yes. So that would be like, like we talked about our radio waves, television waves, any frequency flares, flares, uh, rifles, six shooters, <laughs> you know, all those kinds of things. So this is what this thing says. There could be intelligent beings who haven't yet invented radio telescopes. We humans belonged to this category until the 21st century. Or there could be others who have the means to communicate, but don't. Perhaps they're not interested or fear they might endanger themselves by advertising where they are. So this is the communication outside of their own planet. Correct. Okay. Well, it's... Well, it's me. Yes, it's making sure that we don't send that out. Now, technically, we have radio signals that we created that escape the atmosphere. Yeah. So they're even they're unintentional radio signals that are out there. So even if they had something internal within their own society, it still could have escaped. And yeah, and without them knowing it, it. Right, or like, without them thinking about it. What, that's right? what happened to us. Right. Where we don't outwardly, but we actually outwardly send but signals we, out. Right. Too. But we did. Like starting in the '60s, but right. before then, radio waves could leave the atmosphere, right? Yeah, without us think even it. thinking about right. it. Right, we what, didn't know that that was happening. I I don't know if we thought about it. Right, like I'll be honest, it wasn't even like a consequence of what you know what I mean. What's the consequence of radio waves? Like they would eventually go away. I I don't think anybody thought of that as a that it just goes on forever. Right, because once again, no one used this until. The si- you know, until 60, correct? So, well, I mean, people I'm sure were talking well, about Well, there were it. radio waves before then. Right. But we just didn't, we didn't think about the fact that it could leave the atmosphere and continue on through space forever. Right. Or that we, it would get picked up by, like aliens would use that as a sign that we're, um, track us down. We wouldn't, I wouldn't even thought that we would, that would even be on our radar. I would agree. Just a thought. Yes. Um. Yeah, so we've had it. Now, what's interesting is we've about we've had what radio for about 70 years now? No. No. Way more 90 than that. years. Yeah. Say ni- 1920. Well, 100 years. Yeah, because in 39 was the uh, War of the Worlds broadcast. Okay, so 20 38. So yeah, let's just say in the dep- say 1930, the depressions. Okay. The depression. The depressions. So <laughs> that's about 90 years ago. Sure. Yeah. So the thing is, that's only we're only 90 light years the furthest signal that we would have ever created if it had escaped from yeah, the atmosphere and saying. is still strong, yeah, is still out there, is only 90 light years away. That's not that far when you think about it, right? In the realm of the galaxy, that's not that's a baby step. Drop in the bucket, my friend. All of those expressions. Yeah, exactly. So what are your thoughts about that? Because everybody talks about pointing up to listen, right? But even we, who have the capability to listen, only have extended out 90 light years from our from our home base. Well, we're still a newer civilization. I mean, yeah. the, the human on Earth is only is new because we, well, from a technological perspective, you know? Yeah. We, we're incredibly immature. Yes, we're definitely young, but we we've advanced so far, also, right? We're, we're we're both ends of that. We're in this amazing explosion of understanding and technology and yeah. knowledge and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're we are still neophytes at it. And I just looked at the radio thing; it's about a hundred years. So oh, uh, it was off so by nineteen twenty. Ooh, so Whoa. say a hundred years. This yeah. makes it an easy easy number. So the furthest we've reached out is a hundred light years, and I think the closest star system is like four million light years. Holy crap! Or something is that right? I don't it's know. Not four. I don't think it's four point. Oh my god! Are you gonna look it up? Yes. You, do you is do you have a disorder like where if you don't look something up you'd freak out or yes. your would your brain leak out of your ear? <laughs> How would what would happen? Have you listened to no. the beginning of the beer googles or the non consciousness where I have to say everything three times before we can continue? N- Just listen. It's annoying as fuck. What do you what do you say I'll three like, times? Hi, 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 or how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? <laughs> All right, all right. I've done it. I've done it a few times now, and I've listened to it. Gone. Oh. It doesn't sound as bad, except for when you're listening for it. And now I just told everybody to listen for it, dude. Why? Did you, oh man! I just broke my own glass, bro. Why would you say that? I just broke my own glass. Damn it! The, uh, allegedly, according to the beer Google, allegedly the closest Starbucks is what came up. <laughs> 
<laughs> like even the Googles is against us. Dear Marvin the Martian, may I have a white? I'm going to blow up the earth. Would you like a caramel twist. macchiato? <laughs> I'd like it cold. Um, Proxima Centauri is 4.2465 light years. So it would have gone through that one. I think Sirius is like eight light years away, something like that, 9.8. So we would have gone past a couple stars. Okay. But only 100 light years from where we are, our current yeah. location. If a signal still has a strength to be picked up and is coherent and hasn't been broken up by solar Space winds. Space debris. And, yeah. 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 And, and then radio and the radiation in the Van Allen belt. Right. And, you know, the Dad, Orion belt. You know, when Father un, un, loosens his belt, it's over, my friend. When that Van Allen belt comes out from All the, loops, the belts, it's over, my friends. Terrible. Yeah. So we've got, uh, what are your thoughts about all of that? Excellent, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of the number. Okay. The fraction of intelligent life sites where communication develops. I let, what's what is an under this? It doesn't thing? say. Doesn't give you an, no. an, an, an approximate. No, nothing. Okay, so you want to do another five percent? Because it'd be five percent. Okay, so we this one is 20, intelligent one is, life that has the ability to communicate outside of its own planet. Correct. So it has the capability of sending out some kind of signals. Now it could be designed for just their planet, but it still is out there because it's out in the ether right it's out in the atmosphere nice <laughs> i don't know man one in 20 let's do another one in 20 so one in 20 uh planets that can support life do one in 20 of those are intelligent and one in 20 of the intelligent ones communicate outwardly why not do that i right, fine it's a good number right i don't know i don't know the right number to put in there okay so i'm just gonna go with, i'm gonna go with your gut instinct I like, I'm liking our one for tw one out of 20. Okay. Right. Finally. Last. Certainly L. not least, because I want to talk about this bad boy. Oh, dear. L, the lifetime in years of a communicative civilization. So the lifetime in years of a communicative civilization. Humans have been communicative for less than 100 years. Correct. Do you think we or the average intelligent species remaining willing and able to communicate with other star systems for only a century, a thousand years, a million? Your guess is as good as the experts. So this is where Sorry. it gets interesting. Yes. We, as humans, the whole point about this is we've been alive for a hundred years. Well, communicative, communicative externally. Externally. So, so let's, not let's use 1920. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying communicatively alive. We've been alive to the universe. Yeah, okay. No, yes. I don't know. Agree. No, no, no. That's, I, uh, no, that's a great description. I totally misspoke. I apologize. I totally approve. Um, but we've been alive to the universe, exposed to them, showing our twig and berries for, for about 100 years. <laughs> if that, right? Let's say 100 years. Sure. In that time, we've had World War, coming out of World War One. so not so, that was horrible, but we're out of that. World War Two. The Red Scare, the Cold War, all of that. We never pushed the button and destroyed ourselves. We haven't had uh, an, a life-ending event, right? Yeah. End of life event. We haven't had an asteroid like the like the dinosaurs have. Right. How long, on average, do you think civilizations last? I mean, how close were we to blowing ourselves out of the freaking sky? I don't know how close we were. What are your thoughts? Well, everyone says the Russian, the Cuban Missile Crisis was the closest we've ever been, right? Right. So... But what is it? Us? Was it then? Would, were we all mutually assured? I mean, were we all going to be wiped off the face of the yeah. earth? Yeah. It was 1960. Did, were the nuclear weapons that powerful at that point? I'm asking. I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. Please don't look it up. I'm not. I don't care. I was, that's why we're having a conversation about it. I love I'm having conversations. But this is really important is what is the average life expectancy of a communicative civilization? Because humans have shown their greedy side in addition to their right. intelligent side, right? Right. So when there's a fight over resources... The likelihood of us destroying ourselves is is can is there. There's a possibility. Not likelihood. I'm not going to say a high likelihood, but there's a possibility. Of course. Of us destroying ourselves. There's also a possibility I could regrow my hair. Famine, ice age, uh, global warming, climate change, it, all, a myriad. Yes. Myriad things can change that. What do you think? What do you think are some of the most dangerous ones for intelligent species? And which ones can we prevent or which ones are like, how would you rank 
those types of events as in their de- levels of danger? I would say an external force like an asteroid or uh, gravitational issues or earthquake, you know, uh, planet quakes, not earthquakes, uh, that those sort of things I would think are the most likely. I think that humans always put our own crap on everything. So when we talk about non-Earth intelligent beings that communicate, how do we know they're greedy? How do we know that they are self-destructive? How do we... We don't. We have no idea. There could be a thousand species on a thousand different planets that are nothing like us. They have no ego. They have no... They have it's they have no self preservation bullshit. So we all humans always put our our own blah on everything, and that could be a horrible mistake. We don't know that other creatures are like us or not like us. We don't know either way, right? I'm just saying we have a habit of assuming every other species is like us. True. So I don't see. Okay, they it does. Alpha Centauri planet number seven have atom splitting weapons. Why, why would they even think to split the atom? They might not. Yeah. They may develop technology completely different than humans because they have a different type of planet, a different type of evolution. Yeah, absolutely. No, you make a really good point. That's why I was asking. I'm really curious about that. To counter that. No. Do you, what are your thoughts on how evolution works? Because evolution happened here. We evolved, right? Evolution is kind of this, it doesn't really have a consciousness to it, but it works, right? It, yeah. it works to be the most efficient, this, that, and the other. Over time, would evolution assume limited resources like it did in this world and then include the greed, the, the peacocking, the flashing, the alpha mailing, the yeah, yeah the, I got you. The power. I'm just curious if evolution works that way, or if it could work, or the consciousness could override it earlier, right? Like we we are evolved to a point where we can consciously look at ourselves and and create effect change in ourselves. I mean, we're amazing beings. We can make behavioral and uh, personality changes in ourselves by consciously deciding to not act on instinct, for example. Yeah. I, you know? I totally agree with that. And I think that's an amazing thing. That is such a great, cool thing. But every once in a while, that, that evolution rears its ugly head. I'm curious if evolution works is a universal type thing or if it was, it just happened this way here. I would guess that it it would make sense it would happen everywhere because if you think about the a human... We no longer need our tonsils. We no longer need our spleen. We no longer need our gallbladder. So there was a reason why those things were there before. Yeah. I don't know why, but we don't need those pieces anymore. So it would make sense that on a different planet, a different humanoid type race, they have, oh, they have a flibbity flibbity. And the flibbity flibbity over a million years is no longer necessary. So it just falls off or it, Maybe they needed tails for a while, and now they don't need tails yeah. or something to that yeah, effect. Yeah, something changed. So that- it, it makes sense that what you don't need is no longer there and useful, and what you do need may develop. To me, that right. would make sense universally. Right. So I'm wondering if as the species become the more dominant of the group, right, it, primates became the dominant species is there an alpha the alien i understand what you're saying right so i'm just wondering i'm saying to that end are they greedy like us or is that like a mandatory or are they like like us where they're on a path of consciousness because one the whole point about this is once our base needs are are taken care of food shelter clothing for the most part that's when we can really focus on being better people right but if those pieces are always in jeopardy, those resources are always in jeopardy, there's always that fight. That's where evolution really kicks in and, and kind of rot, writes the story for us. Understood. So just, just a thought on that. So what, what's you, what do you think is a good number? 
before I answer that to your point, I think it's possible. And I think it's probable that many civilizations around the galaxy don't develop that alpha mentality. I think that it's possible that they go, well, shit, if we all treat each other better and more equally, we can get more shit done. We can become a better civilization. We can reach farther places. We can be better all around, which is true with humans. Just we don't do it because we're selfish assholes. So yeah, to your point, we, we talk about projecting our feelings on others. Right. You are absolutely right. It could happen that way. My curiosity is it feels to me like evolution does what it does for survival and for efficiency. And I feel like every place I mean, to be on this spinning rock that's revolving around a ball of hydrogen that's X thousand degrees, how many, 93 million miles from it, with this other thing spinning 236,000 miles around us in the moon, uh, you know, like, that we're here. It's crazy. Is astonishing. Totes. So it would just, to me, it would almost make sense, like, evolution is like a prick in general, (laughs) just because, not intentionally, but it's... Because it's about survival. So you don't think evolution applies to non... To, you don't think it applies to extraterrestrials? No, I, I think I feel like I feel like it does. Okay. And with limited resol- resources, evolution will make a, a, the dominant species greedy. It, not make it, but it's like a byproduct. Because the greed is the collection of resources, right? Isn't that really what greed is? Is collecting resources, right? So Whether is this it's money just a or, conversation between... The nihilist and the me. Well, no, I'm is not. That what, I'm not is, complaining about. It. I'm, no, I'm, asking, not, I'm not saying you're complaining. I'm right. saying yes. Is that what open, this conversation is turning into? Yeah. Well, that's part of why where Drake is very important is how long do you think humanity can last? For example, I mean, can three, is one four thing, weeks, right? You know? But how close were we? February. To like, we <laughs> we haven't had we haven't had an ELE right. But if we were the dominant species when the asteroid hit. When the dinosaurs were extinct, we might be the extinct ones, right? Absolutely like we, correct. So it's very interesting. Because what life did survive that asteroid hitting in the Yucatan Peninsula? Right. I don't... I, it was point point one percent of that or something. Right. Some ridiculous number, right? And how many ice ages have come and gone and... Yeah, a few, and, yeah. And life survived, right? Yeah, absolutely. Through it. And that's what evolution does, right? It's, survive, it's a survival instinct. And by the way, yes. excellent job with the button. I know. I'm I haven't heard. I haven't heard a single. I'm pressing the buttons. I haven't heard a on single the video on camera. Ruz. Oh, now now I'm knocking, so the dog's gonna bark some more. So <laughs> to go to the, oh. your question, yes, the lifetime in years of a communicative civilization. Does that mean it's the entire it's the lifespan or how old it is presently? No, the lifespan of it. So how long? Do you, on the average, do you think intelligent civilization can last? How many years? Or does last, I guess is the correct term. Because, you know, like I said, it could be an outside of their, outside of their possibility, right? Or it could be internal destruction. So the question is, how long will a civilization communicate outside of their planet? That's... No, how long... Does a, a civilization oh, that's able to communicate Li- ex- survive? Right, because okay. because once again, we we are now a thousand years old from the first radio signal. Well, now we, now we've re- I know I'm saying say I'm saying I'm using an example. Say we're a thousand years down the road. Okay, okay. Now our radio signals are a thousand light years away, so we've reached out ten times further, right, than we had. Yeah, prior. in every direction. In every direction, right? omnidirectionally. Um, um, wow. Yeah. That's right. Even like studying the dictionary, bro. That's right, ladies. <laughs> twenty-five cent word, right there. Shit. Drop, dropping, dropping a twenty-five cent word, ladies. Um, but right, how does long? that make sense? Yeah, yeah. How okay. long does the average civilization live? So, think about like we talk about ni- the nihilistic Earth. We blow ourselves up, or we use all the resources and we can't recycle anymore. Uh, the water dries up. Uh, an asteroid, like all yeah, those things, yeah, play yeah, into yeah. effect. What do you think? I think a conservative number would be a thousand years before something shitty could happen. What do you think? Ten thousand or a thousand? 
Because like we had dark ages. Now we we weren't able to communicate outwardly yet. I understand. I'm, so I'm yeah. wondering if we ever went into another dark ages, we reset that clock, right? Because then that that life doesn't exist anymore. If we're no longer communicating, yeah. Internet shuts down. There's. <gasps> I'm there's, sorry. What? Yeah. There's a globe. There's like a global war, right? Internet shuts down. Blah blah blah, and no one knows how to turn that shit back on because all the people. Well, you that do could, just ask Al Gore, gonna, bro. Oh, that's right. Duh. Because he developed the internet. It's the interwebs. <laughs> Isn't that man bear pig? <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, man bear pig. Man bear pig. So, yeah. So how so long thousand, do you think, what do you think the is a good The average number? is a thousand years. I don't know. What, like it's once again, this it, is why it's a thought experiment. Cause that kind of reminds me of there are UFO guy that said that there's civilizations 500 million to a billion years old. So you're saying that if that guy's right, Dr. Whatever the fuck, I forgot his name already. From last week. Gre Greer. Dr. Greer. Stephen Greer. Dr. Stephen Greer. Esteban. So if that's, you're saying the average is a thousand, that means if there's a hundred civilizations, a lot of them are dying really fast. That's the question though. I, I'm curious what that, what that question is because we, we're in a very weird point in our life right now that we're aware of, right? We're kind of eating ourselves up internally. To a, I am to an extent. Well, people, I'm delicious. Like the U S is kind of having a little bit of digestion with itself. It's got a little indigestion. Well, that's, but see, that's happened with every empire that's ever been on the planet. Right. My question is when is one of those become an end of civilization event? Or like I said, an asteroid or some other thing. Yeah. There are other things that can destroy of course, life, right? Of like course. environmental issues, right? Yeah. To, to that a extent. planet so, quake. Right. I mean, an ice age, we, we understand the, the most recent ice age for humanity was 10,000 years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's nothing. That's a blip. Right. Now, the, the question is, though, would we have survived that with the technology we have now? Per, probably? Well, humans maybe? survived it before. Yes, humans but I don't... Humans were around 11,000 years ago. Right. And I'm assuming that some didn't live... They lived in places where... The equator, bro. It probably wasn't the worst for you, that, Yeah, because right? you have to, you, you so have they to migrate, migrate to something. survive. Right. So they were you, you highly adaptable. You can't live in Kansas. Right. Totally highly adaptable. I'm just asking when... An ice age wouldn't end the life, but I'm saying like I would an asteroid obviously you're correct. would or some other, some other. Yes. Thing. So what are your thoughts about... A thousand that years. Time? Do you want to do 10,000? Yeah, because I don't want to believe the worst in it. You know, I, I, I agree with you that being conservative is the, is the best course of action on this stupid fictional equation. But I, I don't think we should shoot ourselves in the foot either. That's yeah, true. Good so, uh, you know, we, we can't, again, we can't put our human stuff on other, other creatures. Because right. advanced civilizations would also have solutions to a lot of problems. I would hope they would. Right. That's a good point. You can't think about the way humans are today. You think about the way that humans are in 500 or 1,000 years. Hopefully things were more advanced and more civilized and less shitty, you know? It's interesting how you and I, well, not you and I. I you? can't speak for you. Yeah. It's interesting how we see that. Like, the intelligence of all humanity has increased exponentially year over year. The world's more literate, more yes. has, has more goods, more wealth, whatever. And yet it feels like there's still a bunch of stupid fucks out there. Yeah. And you, again, you can't, <laughs> ha, we don't, we have no idea right. if what you just said translate to other planets. That's absolutely which correct. Which it very well may, right? Well, it could translate in the fact of greed, like greed in its own way, Survival but not instincts. stupidity. It could have, it could be highly evolved or just... This the consciousness comes develops earlier in in some evolved civilizations, and they they see to your point the work of cooperation being more of more that importance. Outweighs everything, right? Outweighs everything else, right? And I, I that's an absolutely true statement. So, do you want to do a hundred thousand? What like what? What do you think is like a, well, a good number? You were at a hundred, then you went to ten thousand. No, well, thousand. I was at 10. You went to ten thousand. I went to a hundred. I'm figuring a nice, nice round number. I mean, I don't think, a, I think a million would be challenging. I agree. I can't speak for asteroid impacts in a yeah. million years. 20,000 maybe? Just, because I'm just thinking asteroid alone. How many, we're hit how many times 
by something. Yeah. Well, if you look at the moon. Right. I mean. Well, yeah. I mean, but that was early development as well. Of course. So, no, of course. And, yeah. And a lot of like Jupiter swept out, right? A lot of the the gravitational pull of Jupiter with the asteroid belt helped. Yeah. Kind of clear out the inner circle. But every once in a while, some come through, right? Yeah. Halley's Comet, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And there's a couple that are slated for like early 2030s, I think. Oh, I'm excited, dude. Perfect. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's the Y2K of the tw oh, of God. 2030. It's the 2K30. How much fucking panic do we have to put on each so other? Stupid, it's so dumb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So let, lock, let's lock down a number. What, what do you think is a legit number? 20, 30, 1,000? Obviously not. <laughs> I just go back to like, like the Mayans. They ruled for like 2,500 years. And they had no electricity. They had no... So they had... N they built a civilization. We don't know how. But they built a civilization. Then they were gone. And no one knows why. So... I don't... But on the other side of the coin, I don't think it's fair to... But they were invaded by conquistadors who gave them illness. Well... And that was also a smart technologically advanced civilization already true they just didn't communicate they have communication but they weren't an outward communication yeah yeah of course yeah they verbal and they had you know right cave drawings right. yeah and well everyone and shit right and spaniards were also yeah they had written with a written word yes. right and yeah language yeah so it was really that was an invasive force not a not a right and like it just like mars to me seems like what the fuck happened there it it feels like there sh there was something there and almost the way people describe the way it looks is almost like this top layer was like ripped off almost like this thing came through and just like a storm or something just really just took a, I don't know what it was but it seemed really weird it was the Borg <laughs> it's definitely it's the Borg resistance is futile it's the so. Borg bro <laughs> hashtag Borg bro <laughs> alright um so I don't know dude let's do 20,000 I think that's fair 26,000 okay Let's do it. So you let's, the go lifetime, through, let's go through the numbers. The lifetime in years of a communicative civilization. 26,666. Beautiful. Are we are we agreed? Sure. Fantastic. So let's go through all the equation pieces again. All we'll, the equation we'll, pieces. We actually plugged them into your little handy I plugged dandy. them into the the handy pbs.org, sir. And you're going to share that link with it with me I so would, I can put it on. It would on be that. my honor to do so. And my pleasure. All the, also Tambian of the tambourines. Uh, do you want me to go through the equation? Yes, please. The Drake equation is R, the number of suitable stars that form in our galaxy per year. We put one times FP, the fraction of these stars that have planets, 0.35, times NE, the number of Earth-like planets meaning planets that have liquid water within each planetary system. We put one times FL, the fraction of Earth-like planets where life develops, 0 0.05 times FI, the fraction of life sites where intelligent life develops. And to them, intelligent life is symbolic communication of yes, some sir. sort. Yes, sir. We put 0 0.05 there as well. Times FC, the fraction of intelligent life sites where communic communication develops. 0.5. Times L. The lifetime in years of a communicative civilization, we put 26,666 years. I like it. Because I'm weird and I love Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. Did, did they have a 26,666 years? No, but... There's not six, enough six, 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 six. You should have done 666,666 six, years. D, I'm not changing it. 0. 0.66. Should have done 666,666.66 six years. Yes. So the Drake equation is R times FP times NE times FL times FI times FC times L equals N. Now for FL, I have FE, which is where I don't know why. I think it's where Earth-like planets were at. Life yeah, they said Earth, fraction of so, Earth-like planets, yeah. and this is FL. And is FL for life. Life, correct. Yeah, so just just to be clear, there are different schools of thought I on, think the, Drake on the Drake was uh, bilingual. 
Yeah, and he was phenomenal pop musician. Right? No, well. he's not at all. Uh, N is at the 90, number. He's got moves. Shut up. The number N. The number. <laughs> I'll bang on a button, bro. And the number of communicative civilizations within the Milky Way today. The Milky Way with those numbers. Our galaxy. Using oh. the numbers. Now, these are assumed numbers. Let's, these are let's numbers say, that you and I can up with. We use the 1 in 20 rule and basically <laughs> and 0.35 to split the difference on one of them. I know that. Yes, sir. That is all Get correct. Get the answer, sir. And drum roll to you. <gasps> your I estimated realize. equation yields... Your equation yields an estimated communicative civilizations of the Milky Way. 1.16. 1.16. Per galaxy, in the Milky Way. In the Milky Way. Okay. Well, that's us. So now we're yeah. that one. Yeah. So that's based upon our numbers. It's saying that there is no other intelligent life that communicates that has survived in our galaxy. Interesting, because it could have died out before we would have caught it as well. That's part of the lifespan. Yes. Do me a favor. Put a hundred thousand years in. I'm curious, just what that difference would change. What okay. that would change it to. Would it be four times about? Would it be four point? That makes sense. I would guess, but I'm wondering. Yeah, I guess it would be, right? Because it's four times that one number. That's so stupid that I said that. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> I'm, I'm bang. 4.375. I'm banging my head against the. Uh, you, the so if the average show it. lifespan of the civilization is 100,000, it's four. 4.375. So four in the Milky Way. So let's use 100,000. That's That sounds fair. Okay. Because if you're smart enough to communicate outwardly, you're probably smart enough to build a bunker, maybe grow some food indoor, have down. electricity, Hunker obviously, down. to grow, you know, grow with UV lights. I mean, I would think you could survive. I don't know how well you'd survive, but I think you could survive pretty much. Most Matt times. Damon survived Matt on Mars Damon. by planting seeds in his poop, in his bro. Poop. <laughs> if I Matt Damon it. can do it. Matt Damon. <laughs> that anybody can do it, bro. <laughs> Bro, so that was Drake. <laughs> Did was that boring as fuck for you? Was that was that no, semi educational and, and hopefully not too boring? What do you think, Twitter world? Tell us, rate, review us, subscribe, Just download follow. stars. We're we're doing really yeah, well on downloads, it, bro, bro. But no one's leaving comments. I man. need comments, oh bro. My God. Mars bro, brain is gonna leak out of his ears, bro. Seventeen days. <laughs> um. Yeah. How many? How many alien? How many alien? Alien like civilizations do we have? Where... Oh, like chest, chest bursters? <laughs> Actually, you know what? There's none because he made those. David made them. They weren't natural. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot. I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah. They, huh. weren't, they didn't that even evolve. That fucking movie. I didn't not, know. Prometheus not, makes me Prometheus wanna... was good. Not No, Covenant was the one. Covenant was good. Oh. Prometheus was horrible. Prometheus was the first. Yes. yes. Covenant was the one where they showed him making them. Yes, remember? correct. So I'm... Um, Pump the brakes a little bit on that's like sir. genetic mutation and manipulation. And uh, coming upcoming on the next beer Googles, what are we what are we talking about in the next beer Googles? I'm, I decided we're going to do a spoiler. Uh, <gasps> are every, you teasing, sir? Yeah, we're teasing. So we're going to tickle the balls a little bit. Um, <laughs> so on the next beer Googles, what's our what's our plan? We're going to talk. We're ranking. We something. are ranking. We're not doing listies. We are ranking all the Star Wars movies from worst to first. Thank you. And that's 11 of them. It's nine in the three trilogies. And then Solo and Rogue One we added in. Correct? Uh, is that the only other? Yeah. We're, there's, there's no, no there's Mandalorian. No, other other, no, there's no other okay. one. So, and I did, uh, I did survey the Honorable Abel, oh, cool. the Star Wars psycho. He's got Star Wars tattoos and shit. Awesome. And he has a surprise insert into the list or that you're going to giggle your ass off it's going to be amazing. <laughs> is it balls. fanboys no it's my favorite movie of all time. no it's a it's a star wars that he inserted in the list i just cracked up so that 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 and that's on the next bureau googles i believe yes that's correct as for the drake equation let's close this motherfucker out okay what are your thoughts about all like all of these different fractions and everything does that make like sense of no. those are the those are the fact factors that that count towards yeah, the number yeah, of civilizations. Absolutely. Yeah. I would agree that it is. I think I, I, the number is very low, I believe, but well, there are billions of galaxies. But so there, are there could be a billion then. Yes. 
civilization. But the fact that there's billions of stars in our galaxy alone, and this equation states there's only four intelligent civilizations, I find, I just that's that I don't, that's hard for me to believe. I thought it would be way more than that. I totally get what you're saying, but if you're thinking about it this way, though, you're talking about the rate of a star growing. I understand. So how many per year, right? So there's only one of those. Now, this civilization could exist the same time as this one. Yeah. But something could happen here, and it dies. Yes. And then this one makes it longer. Yeah. Right? And then this two more spring up, but then two go quicker. Or there's 10 something happens, civilizations right? that don't want to communicate outside of their own planet. Exactly. Or, so, or they're still in 1875 with the train and shit. Right. And, and no are, radio. And these are, yeah, you could, Marty! <laughs> you mean Back to the Future 3. Um, that was good. That's, thank you. Um, I still did not understand that relationship between that boy and that doctor. I'm still trying to figure it out. Don't stop. Just, no. Marty, we gotta go back to the future! Um, to that end, though, these are all just make up numbers that we just plug some stuff in. It could be higher. The numbers could be higher. Long. We're trying to be conservative for a reason. However, we determined that in the Milky Way galaxy, there's one. We know that we are Ta -da. the one at least, right? You're the one, bro. So it makes total sense that in the billions of galaxies, there's one per holy fuck balls is all I got to say about there's that. There's billions of intelligent life yeah and that's that's with very conservative numbers in my opinion well yeah if if because the original answer was one right so yeah. one times a billion is a billion i'm right. really good at math yay me <laughs> so uh, obviously that is a goddamn lot of alien civilizations yeah. and and going back to the greer point about the close encounters thing right if they if it's a dimensional thing they might not be susceptible to the physical damages of things if you can travel interdimensionally as well in some cases. That's a very good point. Once we get to that certain consciousness. Cause, yeah. You know, so there's so many things that go into this. We don't know what direction Earth and, and humanity is going to go, but it's really interesting to see. And I, I can't wait, man. I can't Are you excited? Wait. Well, I can't wait for the first fucking woo to land and be like, we, we literally come in peace. We've got answers for everything. We love you. And love is, is the only way. And if you don't want love, we'll just take care of you right now. Like we, we can read your heart. We can tell if you're, if you're a loving person or not. And then we're going to kill everybody. Who doesn't what love. did no, kidding. Dr. That's Greer just... say was the language of the universe? I don't remember. Cause they originally it was, I, I saw on a YouTube video with a bunch of smart people. Math is the original language. Math is the language of the universe. Yeah. Then Dr. Greer said, Blank is the language of the universe. I don't remember what it was. Is it love or consciousness? No, it was, yes, consciousness. consciousness. Thank you. Yeah. And maybe they're both wrong and love is the uh, language yeah. of the universe. I mean, look. Peace and love, bro. Well, you can't get to unconditional love if you have conditions surrounding sorry, your life. what? I, that was, that was no, beautiful, No, no, I didn't mean if you didn't have conditions in the thing, but I'm saying like, if there weren't conditions placed on you from other factors, external factors, yeah, yeah. you can't have unconditional love. In my opinion, I think unconditional love is kind of a fallacy. I mean, you might you could say it about your child or your pet, or your pet has it for you. But let's be honest: if I have cats and I do that, I croak. They're eating me if they're not getting fed for a while. You're delicious, dude. <laughs> Don't miss oh, the feel, Leo. Finger Stop sandwiches. It. Stop it. Um, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like. So I'm wondering if a civilization has, is out there that's gotten to that consciousness of, of that unconditional portion. Like, Wouldn't it seem probable? Definitely possible. I, I can't rule it out. If there's a billion civilizations, wouldn't one of them be the antithesis of suck? And one would be awesome? Or what no. do you mean by suck? Like... What? It would be anti suck. It would be like <laughs> oh, what's the oh the antithesis? antithesis yes, of, the it would be like okay. beautiful, yes. pure, yes. like just the most breathtaking, precious thing ever. Precious, I'm precious. I'm precious. Excellent point. We need to know how old these civilizations get because oh, once baby. again, once again, if it if there is an event that ends that civilization, who knows how you know, regardless of how high brow they were. Or how woke they were, or how conscious they were, if they can't escape 
what I agree. fate befalls them, I agree. They can't continue. However, yes. it would be from what the stuff we've seen and heard in the anecdotes about UFOs and all this other stuff, there could be an interdimensional aspect to that. And if there is, obviously they have someone has gotten to that point. So I feel like someone's beyond just this physical dimensional realm. I would agree. So maybe they can be unconditional. I what hope you, so. What are your thoughts? Yeah, close what, it out, man. What I hope. So tell I us hope about Drake. Gonna... Tell us about your love for all this and what you think. I love everybody, bro. Peace and love. Uh, I think it's a very. The dude spent a lot of time putting all those fractions together, man. It makes sense too, though. Yeah, fuck fractions. Like, yes, that no one collected that until 1960. I mean, that's only 60 years ago. Well, I mean, people were probably thinking about it, right? But right, but to some not... Some dude finally put it on paper? Right. That's... Yeah, I agree. And, and we know it's not an actual equation. It's not like physics. We know it's not like Newton's law. Well, it's easy because I can't do physics. <laughs> For real. I got like a C minus, dude. Yeah. But we know that, right? But it, it dumbs it down to us for us to digest like how really infinitesimally small we are in this great universe that we, in which we live in it's, which? An, it's amazing it's beautiful out there gorgus gorguius all the gorgius yes yeah so that's drake my friends thanks for that um was drake thank you also well Tambians. thank you for uh what, what's that called uh placating my ego uh, uh patronizing me on this on this journey what? in a good way no, no. I was like, why? How did I patronize you? Not Bonnie Raid. I can't make you love me. Don't patronize me. I didn't like patronizing, didn't know that song. like patron it. Like you're, you were pa being a patron. You were being. So supportive. it was a good thing, not a yeah. bad. Okay, patronizing me. Yeah, in a good way. <laughs> I know it sounds like a bad I was word. Like, I wasn't that much of a dick. No, you weren't a dick at all, what man. The, I'm so confused. You were the antithesis of dick. Anti dick. You're the well, antithesis of dick. Girl. Just like the there's some civilization out there. There's the antithesis of suck. Yeah. You were the answer to this. Well, you're so sweet. Thank so you so thank much. You, sir. You're so sweet. So let's close it out. What do, what any do you have any more final comments about Drake? And then how are we gonna how are we gonna end this, my friend? Uh no, I have no further comments about Drake. Do you have any further comments about Drake? The equation. No. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. <laughs>